Hi and welcome. You're listening to the X22 Report. My name is Dave and this is episode 1063A and today's date is August 31st, 2016 and the title of the episode is There Will Be a Failure in the Global Supply Chain as the Global Economy Deteriorates. Let's get into the economic collapse financial news. Now, today we see the market is down. Gold was suppressed once again and I'll get into gold in a little bit. But what we're looking at right here is the U.S. government central bankers, their mission is to keep this illusion alive up until the collapse and throughout the collapse. And the only way they, the only way they can do this is they need to manipulate everything to convince the public the economy is doing well. They did it back in 2007 going into 2008 they did it very well but since that period of time they've mastered the illusion but when we look at these economic indicators we see that things are rapidly starting to fall apart we know that the unemployment numbers they are completely manipulated here in the united states we understand they manipulate them and europe is doing the same thing as the united states where they don't count those people who have fallen off the job market We see the Eurozone July unemployment rate has inched up to 10.1%. And you have to remember, this is the manipulated number. Just like the United States is telling the world that we are at 5%, we know these numbers are much, much worse. We see out in Canada. Now, the first half of 2015, we saw Canada enter a recession with two quarters of negative GDP. And then all of a sudden, everything bounced back. Well, that dead cat bounce, it is over. The second quarter of 2016 GDP slumped to 1.6%, double dipping to the worst since the second quarter of 2009. Now, the problem with this plunge is that oil prices actually had their best quarter in seven years as the economy tanked. So we can see, when we look at all these different countries, they're all starting to get hit right now. We're starting to see GDP go down, unemployment go up, housing, that bubble is popping. And we know out in Japan, for the last 21 years, their unemployment rate continually gets lower and lower and lower. Right now, they're at 3%. And everyone is saying, well, if they're in this recession and they're just chugging along here and their economy is not that great and the Bank of Japan owns most of the stock market, how is their unemployment rate at 3%? Well, there is a hidden problem in all this. Just like the United States where their unemployment is at 5%, the number of men in their prime working years are joining the ranks of Japan's long-term unemployment, and they're just not counted. What's happening here is we see manufacturing, it is shrinking in Japan. The number of manufacturing jobs dropped to 10.3 million in June from 11.7 million a decade ago. And they're becoming a service state like the United States. Their healthcare and welfare sector added 2.7 million jobs. Their manufacturing is declining. And we can see right now they're heading in the same direction as the United States, where they will no longer manufacture. Now, is that day today? No, but they're moving in that direction. And we're starting to see that those individuals who don't or can't find jobs, it's just like the United States. They're just not counted. They're off the job market. Now, when we look at gold, we understand gold is a problem for the central bankers. They can't let gold rise. And we know they suppress it every chance they possibly can get. Now, we saw that someone dumped almost $5 billion of notional gold into the futures market to bring the price close to $1,300 an ounce. And we've been seeing this last week and this week. Actually, this is a good time for everyone. 
start purchasing. It's on sale. Remember what they did back in 2007, 2008 with the subprime securities, where they kept the illusion alive, even though everyone was defaulting, and these subprime securities were worthless. They were garbage. They kept the illusion alive to everyone that these were AAA incredible investments. Look what they're doing to gold right now. They need to keep that illusion alive by continually suppressing gold. And eventually what's going to happen, just like back in 2008, it will all fall apart. The illusion will be ripped away and gold will move up once again. We see ADB came out with their job numbers. And we can see right now that job numbers are manipulated. The initial jobless claims are rising right now. ADP is saying that the trend is good, but jobs shrank. And we can see right now that construction jobs fell by 2,000. No manufacturing jobs were created. Service jobs, well, they were added to. And we can see right now that these type of jobs are all low-paying type of jobs. And we can see that nothing has changed. They're continually manipulating all of this. And there are no manufacturing jobs. Construction jobs are dropping. We're adding bartenders, waitresses, servers. And all of this is happening as we're in this incredible recovery of an economy. And we can see right now, this is not a recovery. This is a collapse of the system. Now, since all these jobs are being created and they're telling us how great it is, we would think that retail would expand, stores would open, more people would be shopping online, online would be booming. We're not seeing this. Actually, 812,000 cable subscribers, well, they decided to cut their services. Why? Because they don't have the funds to pay for it. So right now, we're seeing that there's 1.4 million fewer paid pay TV subscribers in the second quarter of 2016 compared to 2015. And no, they're not moving over to other systems. They're saying we can do without. We see pending home sales. Well, guess what? On a year-to-year -year basis, pending home sales have dropped by 2.2%. Now, they thought it was going to rise by 2.2%. They were completely off. Now, they made many, many different revisions, negative revisions. And we can see to improve the month-on-month -month number, they revised the information and they were able to put out there that there was a positive month of 1.3%. But when we look at what's happening from a year-to-year -year basis, we are down by negative 2.2%. All they're doing is manipulating the data to convince you that things are going well. But guess what? They are not. We see the Chicago PMI. Well, we had a dead cat bounce once again. And we can see right now that that bounce... Well, it doesn't exist anymore. And we can see that they missed expectations of 54.09. It came in at 51.5. It slowed down in the summer. And we can see right now that the June jump and the July kind of jump, all those gains were completely erased. Gone. Out in Finland... We see they're going to do an experiment. And that experiment is unleashing helicopter money. So they're going to randomly select a group of two to 3,000 citizens already on unemployment benefits. And they will begin to receive a monthly basic income of 560 euros, which is about $600. $600. The basic income will replace their existing benefits. And they want to see how this pilot program does. And they're going to run it until 2018 to see 
if helicopter money works? Will these people go out and purchase goods to stimulate the economy? Most likely, it will not, because we know from the past, this does not work. People save it because they don't know when they're going to receive another check like this. They're not just going to run out and purchase goods like crazy. And most of the time, the helicopter money is not even enough to say, hey, I can pay for my rent, my electric, and everything else, and go out and purchase goods. So this experiment most likely will fail. We see that the International Bank of Reconstruction and Development, one of the five member institutions of the World Bank Group, sold 500 million SDR denominated three-year bonds carrying a coupon of 0.49% at an auction in China's interbank market. This was the first SDR denominated offering in over three decades. And this is right before the yuan is going to be included in the SDR basket come this fall. And we can see already that China is making their move into the market. Now, something very interesting happened, and we talked about how supplies are going to freeze up when this economy completely breaks down. And we're getting evidence of how this might happen. Now, we know the credit bubble will pop and there won't be any credit. But when we think about shipping, what happens when shipping companies go bankrupt and their assets are, freeze, uh, are frozen and they can't make the payments to the ports? They won't allow the ships into the ports. Well, guess what? You have a delivery problem. Guess what? It's already happening. South Korea's Hanjin Shipping this is the seventh largest container ship. They have filed bankruptcy. Their assets are frozen. They are being denied access to certain ports. So what does this mean? Well, they will not be able to make deliveries to the U.S., Europe, Asia, Southeast and West Asia. They have 5,000 global staffs, shipping terminals all around the world. And when you look at this, they have the world's top 10 container carriers that operate some 70 liner and tramper services around the globe. Over 100 million tons of cargo annually. They have 150 container ships and bulk carriers. What does this mean? Well, if they can't get into the ports, they can't make delivery. And South Korea's ocean ministry estimates two to three month delay in shipping or more. Now, if this happens to other shipping companies where they cannot pay their port fees, this is going to be a complete disaster. And we know once there is one that declares bankruptcy, there will be others that follow. As the Baltic Dry Index hovers around 700 or so now and is dropping, this will spread. They've already been decreasing the number of ships. So we can see already we are going to have a global supply chain problem. It will fail. And you might not be looking at supplies on the shelves for three, four, five, six months. It's going to be a complete disaster. And this is why everyone needs to be prepared for what is coming. Listen, everyone. Thanks a lot for listening. Be well, be safe. And now the first half of 2015, we saw Canada enter a recession with two quarters of negative GDP. And then all of a sudden, everything bounced back. Well, that dead cat bounce, it is over. The second quarter of 2016 GDP slumped to 1.6%, double dipping to the worst since the second quarter of 2009. 
Now the problem with this plunge is that oil prices is the U.S. government central bankers, their mission is to keep this illusion alive up until the collapse and throughout the collapse. And the only way they, the only way they can do this is they need to manipulate everything to convince the public the economy is doing well. They did it back in 2007 going into 2008. They did it very well. But since that period of time, they've mastered the illusion. But when we look at these economic indicators, we see that things are rapidly starting to fall apart. We know that the unemployment numbers, they are completely manipulated. Here in the United States, we understand they manipulate them. And Europe is doing the same thing as the United States, where they don't count those people who have fallen off the job market. We see the Eurozone July unemployment rate has inched up to 10.1%. And you have to remember, this is the manipulated number. Just like the United States is telling the world that we are at 5%, we know these numbers are much, much worse. We see out in Canada. Hi, and welcome. You're listening to the X22 Report. My name is Dave, and this is episode 1063A. And today's date is August 31st, 2016. And the title of the episode is, There Will Be a Failure in the Global Supply Chain as the Global Economy Deteriorates. Let's get into the economic collapse financial news. Now, today we see the market is down. Gold was suppressed once again, and I'll get into gold in a little bit. But what we're looking at right here actually had their best quarter in seven years as the economy tanked. So we can see when we look at all these different countries, they're all starting to get hit right now. We're starting to see GDP go down, unemployment go up, housing, that bubble is popping. And we know out in Japan, for the last 21 years, their unemployment rate continually gets lower and lower and lower. Right now, they're 